Hi everyone, in this video we are going to start talking about TCP which is a connection oriented protocol. In this video we are mainly going to talk about the segment structure of TCP. So, but let's have a high level overview about of TCP. So what is TCP? TCP is a point to point protocol that is it is a connection oriented protocol between a single sender and a single receiver. Next TCP uh, ensures uh, the data is transferred reliably between the sender and the receiver. So what it makes sure is the data is transferred reliably. Also further, it also makes sure the data is transferred in order. So it ensures a reliable in order byte stream at the receiver. It is a pipeline protocol. So TCP um, in, has mechanisms to prevent congestion in the network. It also has mechanisms for flow control, which makes sure that the sender does not overwhelm your receiver. Now, do, when can a sender actually overwhelm the receiver? Let's assume that the, that the processing capacities of the sender and the receiver are different. And let's assume that the sender has a higher processing capacity and transmission capacity than the, uh, than the receiver. So if the sender sends at a higher rate than what this uh, pro receiver is capable of handling, what's going to happen is the receiver is going to drop packets. And we don't want this kind of scenario. So TCP has a flow control mechanism built in such that uh, the, send, the, receive, the sender does not overwhelm the receiver. TCP also allows for full, bar, full duplex communication, which means that both parties involved in this, in this connection-oriented protocol can send data to each other. So it allows for bi-directional data flow. So there is, uh, there is not a single uh, sender and receiver. Both parties can act as act as both senders as well as receivers. The the maximum size of the segment that can be uh, sent using TCP is called MSS, and we'll come to this uh, later. As it is a connection-oriented protocol, TC uh, <coughs> first. Some handshaking messages have to be ex exchanged for the connection to be set up. So these handshaking messages are, are actually some control messages that are exchanged between the sender and the receiver such that the connection is set up. Once the connection is set up, the data can then be exchanged between the sender and the receiver. So let's first look at the uh, TCP segment structure. TCP is a transport layer protocol. So you can see that first there is a source port and the destination port. Next, there is also a checksum which is uh, which is used to verify verify if the packet has been received correctly. There are a few additional fields. One is the receiver window, which is which is the bytes, which is the number of bytes that the receiver is willing to accept and is there to prevent uh, the sender from overwhelming the receiver. Next, there are two additional fields here which are very important. First is uh, the sequence number. The next is the acknowledgement number. Both indicate the, both are, both count the number of bytes of data and not segments. And we'll come to sequence number and acknowledgement number in, in detail in the next slide. There are also a few other fields and each of these are, uh, are bits here which are used to indicate um, mm, uh, well, which are used when handshake messages are exchanged. For example, sin and fin here. We will come to that, uh, come to those, uh, these different fields later in detail. So what are, why are, what are TCP sequence numbers and acknowledgements? So sequence numbers are in a byte stream, it is the number of the first byte in the segment's data. So when a byte stream is sent from the sender to the receiver, it is the number or the val value of the first byte stream in the segment's data. Next, an acknowledgement is sent from the receiver to the sender, acknowledging that uh, data has been received. And the sequence number is actually the next byte which the sender, uh, which the receiver expects from the sender. So that is uh, the, uh, the acknowledgement that is sent. So and the acknowledgement is a cumulative acknowledgement, and so it is ever increasing and we'll uh, and we will look at an example and then these concepts will become clear and we'll also talk about what happens when a receiver uh, receives a segments out of uh, out of order for now for students who are uh, curious about this all i want to say now is the tcp spec doesn't uh, mention how out of order uh, packets have to be have to manage and this is left to the implementer 
So let's look at an example here to understand how sequence numbers and acknowledgements work. So let's consider a sender which is sending uh, data to the receiver and the sender is using sequence numbers. So the, the green bars here are sequence numbers for packets which have already been sent and acknowledgements have been received from the sender. The yellow bars here are for packets which, uh, for which, which have been sent but have not been acknowledged by the, the receiver. So these are packets which are in transit between the uh, sender and the receiver. The blue packets uh, indicate or the blue bars indicate the sequence numbers which can be used by the sender for, for packets and these and so they are usable but these packets have not yet been sent. So the window size at the um, is is n. So there are only n packets which can be sent by the by the sender and have not and be not acknowledged. So the the gray bars here are for sequence numbers which are which are not currently usable until further acknowledgements come from the receiver. So so when the so because uh, the sender has already sent uh, the sequence numbers for the green and the yellow bars, if the sender sends a new pa packet, what it does is it picks a sequence number from the, the it first picks the first sequence number from the blue bar. So it picks the first blue bar and puts it in the sequence number and sends that packet. Now, if an incoming uh, pa segment comes to the sender, the incoming segment is going to acknowledge this first uh, uh, bar here. So and so what is going to be there in the acknowledgement number is the sequence number of the next byte expected from the uh, from the sender. As it's the sequence number of the next byte, this <clears throat> the the acknowledgement coming in from the receiver is going to indicate the sec uh, the second yellow bar here. Okay. So let's look at another example. So let's assume that host A and host B are communicating using TCP and host A is sending this data uh, of a single byte of data that's like this character C to the mm -hmm, to host B. So this is the first message, uh, the first segment that's being exchanged. So, so what host A does is it picks up a, a random uh, say, sequence number and an acknowledgement number because currently no data has been exchanged. So it picks up sequence number 42 and an acknowledgement 79 and sends this to a B. So B receives this uh, segment from A. Now, now because B has received a sequence number of, of 42 from, uh, from A and the data that has been sent is a single byte because it's only a character C, it's going to send an acknowledgement is going to, the segment that's going to come from B to A is going to carry an acknowledgement number of 43 because that is the next byte or the number of the next byte which host B is 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 wanting to receive. So it receives 42, so it sends an acknowledgement for 43 because that is the byte that wants to wants to receive. The sequence number is 79 because A the pack uh, the segment that came from A to B had an acknowledgement of 79. It indicated to host B that the, the sequence number that host A is waiting for uh, is 79. Now that is the first byte that it wants. So the packet coming from host B to host A has a sequence number of 79. Similarly, when host A receives this uh, segment from B, what it does is the <clears throat> it puts the sequence number as 43 because the acknowledgement says 43. That is the next byte that the receiver, that is host B, is expecting from A, so the sequence number is 43, and it then acknowledged just 80 because the sequence number was 79 and the data that was sent was a single byte, that's just a character C, so it just acknowledges, acknowledges sends the acknowledgement, sends acknowledgement 80 because it is the next sequence number that is uh, that A wants to receive from host B. To, to make it very simple, the, the way it works is you take the acknowledgement number and put it on alter so when a message is received from say host a to host b what host a is going to do it's going to take the acknowledgement number and put it in the sequence number because that's the next byte that a is wanting to receive from b and to determine the acknowledgement number what it does is it takes the sequence number uh, from host a and adds the number of bytes in the uh, in the number of bytes from host a sent from host a in this case it's one so it adds 42 plus 1 and puts it in the acknowledgement number and sends it to A. Similarly, A does the same thing. It takes, uh, <clears throat> it takes acknowledgement 43, 
puts it as a sequence number. And because the sequence number sent from B was 79 and the number of bytes sent was 1, it adds 79 plus 1 and puts it as and calculates 80 and puts it as the acknowledgement number. So we like to conclude this uh, discussion here by talking about how does TCP set uh, some timeout values. So in the previous slide uh, here, what happened was host A was sending a packet to B and was receiving an acknowledgement. Let's assume that the acknowledgement and the data from host B, the segment from host B gets lost. And recall that losses can occur in the internet due to uh, buffer overflow. So this packet gets, uh, the segment gets lost. So, so to, in order to detect the losses, you have to set a, a timer. So this, the timer is based on the round trip time taken to reach the, to, to travel for, 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 for a segment to travel from the sender to the receiver and an acknowledgement to come back. So the RTT is basically if the total time taken for say a segment to go from host A to host B and then host B and then to come back from host B to host A. So that's a total time that takes. So if the RTT value is take, is is too short, if the if the timer value is taken to be too short, what's going to happen is that is it's well it's lower than the RTT. What's going to happen is TCP is going to time out. On the other hand, if it is too long, it's going to take a long time to react and detect losses. So this this timer value is set to determine whether determine whether a packet that did not arrive from the <coughs> from the sender is lost or not so that is why so you have to set this rtt value so the question is how do you uh, sorry you have to set this timer value the question is what do you, you how do you set the timer value the timer value is set based on rtt so the next question is how do you estimate rtt so every the <coughs> the way it works is you collect a sample rtt which is measured as a time for a se for a segment transition uh, transmission until acknowledgement received. So in this figure here, there <coughs> the RTT for this segment is the time that A sends this uh, sends the segment to the time that A receives the segment. So this so if this is the timeline here, the amount of time between the sending of the segment and the receipt of the acknowledgement is the uh, is a sample RTT. Now. <coughs> A single uh, sample is not enough to estimate uh, the average RTT between the sender and the receiver. So, so several RTT, uh, recent RTT measurements are collected and some kind of smoothing is done to determine the estimated RTT, which is then used to determine the timeout for, or the <clears throat> timeout for a, um, uh, for a packet sent by TCP. This timeout value helps them um, help the sender to determine whether uh, whether the packet actually got lost on its way to on its way to the receiver and helps in retransmitting the packet with this we'll conclude this lecture thank you